Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, I'm called to Karikezi Charles. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting me today. Uh, I was not aware that uh, it will be such a, a good celebration, especially for the kids. 2009 and 2017, how many, how many years? <laughs> Eight years have elapsed. And uh, these young, these young, the young man, the, the last one who heard the speech, he was very, very young. But now he's a, a very big young man who can hold the speech like a man. Hey. <laughs> I was very much uh, impressed and positively impressed. God bless you. And uh, we have so many. By the time they were 20, uh, some years, uh, some people were being added, very few. But now they are reaching the, the number of hundreds, which means that uh, the church has been blessed. And uh, I thank God for that. When I stand here, I see the, the change, the blessings uh, that has occurred in the church. I just feel comfortable and uh, I enjoy this. Thank you for all of you who have come. Uh, we have few uh, new, few visitors, but many are people who are used to come to be in the service. And uh, today is the, the new year for Christians. And to be here at the end of the year, being someone who has, who has been with you for quite a good time, uh, being here at this special occasion, uh, it, make me, it makes me feel very uh, comfortable and uh, grateful for the leadership of the church who has thought about me to come and share something with you on this special occasion. Unfortunately, the other uh, projector is not working, but uh, uh, we look now to serve. Uh, the young man, when he, he had that, that uh, statement, look back, to thank God. Look now to serve God. Look ahead to trust God. All this machine you can't trust. But uh, God is around. And um, we are going to share the word of Christmas. Christmas is not new. It's uh, every year we celebrate Christmas. And uh, we have to to think about Christmas, and uh, I have prepared uh, something for Christmas. Let me try to be not very long. Uh, today, on Christmas, uh, we are going to read from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20, and uh, I'm going, uh, trying to, to answer three questions uh, during my, my message, what is Christmas? Who is mainly concerned with Christmas? And why was Christmas necessary for us? This is what we are going to discuss for the time I have been given. Um, so let us read together uh, because English has so many versions. Uh, we may have some people who have, who have come but who have, don't have a Bible. Let us read together Luke chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, sorry, 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so everyone 
went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was on the house of the house and family line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the lodging place. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. The angel, then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for, uh, for all, pe all the people. Today, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in a cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the, angel, when the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds say to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard just as they had been told. Amen. You will bear with me. I have taken quite a good time without uh, preaching in English. Uh, mistakes will be there, but uh, bear with me. Try to have to get the the the, the necessary the, the message. So I'm going to, to answer these three quick questions which will help us know more about Christia, Christmas. The first one is, what is Christmas? Uh, I said Christmas is a unique historical event of a baby boy whose birth was, be before, was foretold before he was born. Christmas is the best evidence of God's love to many kind. Christmas is the fulfillment of God's promise made to our ancestors soon after the fall. As we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Jesus, before he was born, there were so many prophecies about his coming. When we read uh, in the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, we see that uh, the place where he will be born was known. It will be Bethlehem, a small city in, uh, in Judea. The person concerned with his childbearing was prophesied. The person, I mean, the person who would be uh, in charge of childbearing was known. It will, be a, it will be a virgin. This was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 15. 
the circumstances of his birth, the circumstances of Jesus' birth um, were known. And uh, uh, when we read Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38, we see that a heavenly messenger came to Mary to announce the news and uh, God Almighty himself was involved in the event uh, by the power of his Holy Spirit. The reason why the, ba the baby who to come will be called the Son of God, the uh, Emmanuel, which means God with men. This is Matthew chapter 1, 23. I can testify, and you know, all the people, all the leaders of all religions, nobody can compare with Jesus. When he, the, to have such evidence, such messages, such prophecies, before they come to earth, you can find none. So, it's a special, a unique historical event. Christmas, Christmas, I said, it's the best evidence of God's love to mankind. The best evidence of God's love and grace. Because nothing could save humanity from eternal condemnation. Since the garden of uh, where Adam and Eve lived, when they sinned, People, all the descendants of those people, you and me included, were under condemnation. And nothing could save us. Nothing could save the people from that condemnation caused by sin. Not even the law given to Moses. Moses is a big man. But the law he was given could not save the people in the Old Testament. So God himself had to intervene to, with his initiative, take initiative to send his begotten son, his begotten son to the world to save. To save who? Whoever believes. He is the savior of the world, yes, but salvation is for those who believe. If you don't believe, then you can't say, we have received the Savior. The world has received the Savior. Uh, it makes sense when you believe. So he sent his son. This is the best uh, evidence of God's love. God cares about the people he has cre created in his image. I said Christmas is a fulfillment of God's promises made it to our ancestors. Uh, it, in Genesis 3.15, you are not going, not going to read, but Jesus is the offspring of a woman. Who had to crush the head of the snake, but yet his heel bruised. This refers to the suffering, agony, and death on the cross. Being bruised, the heel. But being crushed, the head, it means total defeat of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. If you step on someone's head and you crush it, then he's finished. Which means that the power of the, the devil was no longer there after the cross. Uh, the devil was defeated. Jesus said, when he was at the island of Patmos, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the hardest. Christmas, when we are on Christmas, we don't just stop on Christmas because Christmas points to Calvary. 
kuvuka kwa Yesu kutwerekeza ku musaraba because Jesus came with the purpose with having in vision the cross of Calvary because there uh, was salvation this was the ultimate purpose for Jesus to come on earth to be an offering pleasing to God on the altar of Calvary what is christmas about so uh, i think you can we, you can pick christmas as a unique historical event as the best evidence of god's love christmas as the fulfillment of god's promise in the to our ancestors now uh, the next question who is the person involved or concerned with christmas i said the man you have spot, stopped on the who is the person concerned with christmas i said the man jesus christ conceived and given a birth by mary but jesus the logos the son of god was eternally with god the father when we read john chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 we see that jesus mary gave birth to a human body to jesus as a man but jesus as the logos as the word of god was eternal he did not start when mary gave birth to him that was not the case this is what is called the miracle of christmas the miracle of incarnation jesus the son of god putting on human flesh when we read the bible some people may not know this but jesus did not start living when he was born by mary the reason why some people compare jesus with mary jesus is divine jesus was he said before abraham lived i am he was he did not start there he was the jesus the person concerned with christmas is the man jesus christ but jesus is not a simple man jesus is not a simple man because he is god man jesus he has the divine nature and the the human nature when he was born it was a human nature because he was there this is the re- re- the reason why we cannot compare jesus with his mother his mother played a good role he, she, she was blessed to, to 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 have such good such special mission but mary uh, this can not give him uh, a right to be divine or to hold, to hold some divine attributes his he has been blessed but uh, uh Jesus is divine Mary is just uh, a man a human being who had a special mission the birth of the lord Jesus as a man in a manger was also a demonstration of humility that we need to imitate as children of god on christmas we cannot fail to get this this idea jesus came from heaven to earth which means he humbled himself he came he became a man a simple man he was born in a manger the simplest location someone can be in a manger there was no house This is a sign of humility. 
And uh, humility is uh, very important because Jesus came and he gave a sign of humility, but also he was accessible to all, to all people. Rich or poor, uh, big men like Magi, and simple people like uh, shepherds. He was accessible to all. And even now, Jesus is accessible to you and me. Everyone can, can reach him. When he, he, he was standing, he said, Come, all who are burdened, come to me. I will give you rest. Everyone is welcome. You don't have to, 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 to go through corners to reach Jesus. No. You go, can go straight to him. He said, come to me. All of you who are burdened. And I will give you rest. I will give you peace. He invites everyone. We don't need to go through Pastor Emable or Pastor Charles to, to, to reach Jesus. No. He invites everyone. You just come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Humility. Humility is very important. Paul, the apostles said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, from verse 6, that Jesus came from heaven, laid aside some of his divine prerogative or advantages, and became a man, someone of very low status. And he said in verse 5, that we should have, that for we should have the same attitude as that of Jesus. Turari square, gucha bugufi nguko yesu ya chie bugufi. Yaruru tse arimana bumunu. Ngu mujiru mutima nguwa arimuri kristu yesu. If you don't humble yourself, you can't be blessed. You can't reach the blessings. Proverbs 29 verse 23 says, a, pan, a person's pride will humble him, but a humble spirit will gain honor. Which shall go fi abona umujisha niwe ushirwa hejuru. In summary, uh, Jesus Christ is our Christmas. No herin ziza ni yesu. The loving Jesus, the model of humility, and the savior of believers. Our Christmas is Jesus. Having a good Christmas is having Jesus. This is the person concerned with Christmas. That is Jesus, God man, born humbly uh, with the purpose of saving humanity. The next, the last question, why was Christmas necessary for us? Why was Christmas necessary for us? Jesus, our Christmas, came with a threefold mission. It's a threefold mission. A threefold mission. The first one, to have the darkness removed, to change the curse of the world. Adam into blessing. To change the curse into blessings. To bring peace to his people. That was the mission. Removing the darkness. We have read in Luke chapter 2 verse 9 that uh, the annunciation of Jesus' birth was accompanied by a big light in the night, the, the, the darkness at night. That had a meaning. A, mes a, a messenger from heaven bringing the good news was accompanied, was in a big light. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus is the light of the world. Yesu no mucho we see. The world was 
and is still in the darkness of evil actions resulting in trouble and fears. The world is still in darkness. We hear wars everywhere. We have problems in families. Husband and wives are not, are not getting along. They, they have problems. Children and parents. Countries and countries. Darkness is there of evil action and trouble and fears. Today we celebrate, we celebrate Jesus as a baby born to us, but much more we appreciate what he brought to us. Ikira Tuzaniye. The power to overcome darkness. Yet you are Susan Yubuasha. Go kill Kanumijima. Hallelujah. He brought to us the power to overcome darkness. When you receive Jesus, the darkness, I tell you, be sure, will disappear. The power to overcome the darkness, and after that, Spread the glory of God around us to those who would be humble enough to accept his message. Anyone can give a testimony who has received Jesus. How he was living in darkness, in trouble, in fears. But when you receive Jesus, light comes in your life. You f fear goes away. I used to give a testimony. I have been working in, in the hospital uh, some 30 years ago. But when I heard that someone was dead in the hospital, I, have, I had no... Um, I had done nothing to the, to the person, but I was afraid. Hearing that someone was dead, I was afraid. But when I, got, I received Jesus, when I received Jesus, the fear disappeared. Why did this fear disappear? For me, the meaning I had for this, it was meaning that inside me, there was a darkness that will draw me to eternal condemnation. But when I repented, light came in, in my heart. And I was comfortable hearing that someone uh, is dead. Yes, I was sorry, but I was not afraid. Jesus is the light. When his light is in you, you feel comfortable. Amen. When you walk at night, you see how, how much you are in, you're in trouble. Especially if, if you are not strong enough to, to, to defend yourself. But on, at daytime, today you can move everywhere. Even the valley, up to the mountain, you can move without fearing. So the darkness... Jesus, when he comes, he, he removes the darkness. How many times have we seen people enslaved by drugs, by uh, lust and violence, come out and confess that they have been saved? They are no, no longer slave or bound by those evil behaviors because they have received Jesus. We have so many testimonies. Even if we, we, can, if we say, uh, let, 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 let us have someone who can give us testimony. We can, uh, we can have so many of them. Uh, changing the curse into, into blessing. We say today uh, a savior, today a savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for us in the city of David. That is in Luke, we have read this. Um, the world is under God's judgment because of sin. The judgment is that uh, the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than the light. The world is living in darkness and uh, in, in, in judgment because of sin. Um, the Messiah, the Lord, came. When he came, 
he had the power to bless people when they received them. When people accepted to receive Jesus as the Lord of their life, they received the Savior. They are free from the bondage of sin and evil deeds. That is the judgment removed. When you are a Christian in Christ Jesus, there is no longer condemnation. There is no, no condemnation. The curse of sin and the darkness goes away. Like the darkness at night, you are no longer under judgment. When people receive Jesus as Lord of their life, things change. And uh, they are free. This is what I wish you. And um, let us move to, to the last. Uh, to the last. Some of my last slides. One of the three missions Jesus came for is to bring peace to his people. Bring peace to, pe to his people. Luke reports in chapter 2, verse 14, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. Jesus came just to break the circle of war and violence in a more effective and lasting way of removing vo violence from the heart of people. Violence means lack of peace. Violence. Jesus came to change violence into peace. To remove violence from people's hearts. The violence outside Start from violence inside. When you have peace, you give peace to other people. When you are violent, when you have a violence in you, then you are no longer a peacemaker, you are a troublemaker. You give just what you have. You give trouble. When you accept Jesus in your heart, on the day of Christmas, many people say, Ah, yes, I've my hand. This is a good wish. But sometimes it just passes like that. But receiving Jesus in your heart, it has evidence. When Jesus has taken place, has entered your heart, in the, in the revelation it says, I'm standing on the door and knocking. When Jesus enters your heart, then peace comes. Peace comes. If a man was not living in a, in a good relationship with his wife, when Jesus comes in his heart, then the trouble stops. He's no longer violent. People in society, when Jesus is in his place in your heart, then things have to change. You can't say, I'm a Christian, I have Jesus, he was born in my heart, and you are, still, and you are yet violent. You are mistreating other people. Jesus, when he has, he has come, in you, then the evidence is peace. Then you can share what you have with others. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, as uh, Pastor Imabel read uh, to, for us, is the, peace, the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Life, is the healer of the epidemic called sin, which is the root, the root cause of violence and wars. Kuchari mpaka hara mahani ni chaha jihari. Huria mugwa bonu munya mahani kuko munya vjaha. Huria mugore ni uvi kananaba andi kuko munya vjaha. But when uh, Jesus comes, then the medicine has been obtained. 
This is a, jo a choice we have to make if we want to peace for us and for our neighbors. Just accept God's word and Jesus as your savior. Then you can share with others what you have. This is a choice to make. Um, I say as a conclusion for this, the Christmas message is the miracle of incarnation where God played the main role through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the message of Christmas. Uh, the son, Jesus Christ, had to bring light that dispels darkness within and among the people. He is the, the, the light that is he is to bring the blessing of salvation where the curse of sin and misery have prevailed. He brings the blessings of salvation. Uh, I'm called Muse. Uh, I'm approaching 70 years. 70. But my father died at the age of 62. My father was involved in, I don't know how they call it, my younger brother was dead at 55 years. Because when they asked me to be involved in those things, I refused. And when I refused because I was saved, they, take, they took my younger brother who, came, who followed me. And he stood on my behalf to be involved in that. And he died at the age of 55. Jesus, when he comes, he comes with blessings. He brings blessing of salvation. I'm having this year because of the blessings of salvation. If you have Jesus, you are blessed. You can last. You can be strong. You can move, you can have many years. Uh, Caleb said, now I have 50, 85. I'm as strong as I was when I was 40. When you have Jesus, you are blessed. Do you want to be blessed? Then receive Jesus. It's very simple. Uh, Jesus came to bring peace. We have said this into the hearts willing to change for, from bad to good life, from despair to hope, from death to life. He came to bring, to bring peace. My best wishes now. I'm saying hurry up like shepherds. Hurry up to see Jesus and present him your heart as an offering. They, they hurried to see Jesus. Hurry up to see him. If you have not seen him, if you don't have a peace today, we are ending the year. Make sure you have the peace Jesus gives. Say this Jesus is the peace giver. Is the peace giver. Is the person who bless, who blesses us. Um, the Muslim I was surprised. We don't read this in the Bible. But it seems that in the Quran, they say that Jesus, when he was young, he could make uh, birds with mud and uh, make them arrive and they fly. It's written in the, the, the Quran. They believe Jesus is a, is a big person, but they don't accept him as a savior. Jesus, uh, I hurry up and present him your heart to have the, his blessing. Have a Merry Christmas 2017. Get the blessings of the, just the best of the blessings God gives. Many thanks for your attention.